we want to get started. We've been graced with uh, the presence of the Boy State University ROTC program, and we start out traditionally by hosting the colors. further ado, I'd like to introduce Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson, the first VA nurse in the history of the country to be elected to Congress. Or should I have said the only VA nurse <laughs> elected to Congress? <laughs> I, know you, I know you're doing the other uh, brain pressure. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Armstead. And let me greet this outstanding uh, panel and thank them for being willing and enthusiastically carrying on this brain trust. Let me acknowledge that uh, former Representative DeGuardia, who has been a loyal, long-time interested worker in the interest of veterans, and has certainly helped me in my quest to get a medal for Dora Miller. If you've heard me speak before, you know that Dora Miller came from the same neighborhood that I did, and as a little girl, my father and I walked the neighborhood when he came home that time after Pearl Harbor to collect money to get him a gift. And of course, he went back, and I never saw him again alive. And um, out of all the time that I've been here, and I look at this cover, and I see Mickey Leland that was like a brother, and he still is my brother. We started our political careers together in the Texas House of Representatives back in 1972. And he actually gave his life in service on a mission trying to make sure that the underserved get services. Now, so, in some circles, I call this saving the best for last. All right? This was the panel that I was most enamored about, to talk about the unfinished business of the 20th century and that is recognizing one of our iconic heroes, Dory Miller, and his quest, the quest for the Congressional Medal of Honor. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Congressman Joseph, named like my son, D. O'Garty from New York, who has labored on the Dory Miller issue for over 30 years and originally introduced legislation with the late Mickey Lee. Can we give him a round of applause? Thank you. But I'm delighted to be here. I'm a persistent guy. You talked about the Harlem Hellfighters. Well, I started the Congressional Hellfighters to get this thing started 30 years ago with Mickey Lee. That's how much resistance that we faced with the military to correct historic injustices, especially historic racial injustices. I didn't know when I became a congressman in 1985 that a million hundred and fifty thousand black Americans served World War I and World War II. And until this fine military historian came to my office in Mount Vernon, New York, and told me, Joe, you're the only one to respond to a letter that I had Governor Cuomo send to the 30 congressman delegation no woman at that time was in that delegation. Uh, and I need to come to visit you. So he came to visit me, Dr. Ramsey, and I said, well, you know, let's go over this letter again, because I cannot believe what I read. And what he told me was a million, five hundred fifty thousand black Americans served, and not one, not one got our nation's highest military award, the Medal of Honor. It's not called the Congressional Medal of Honor. It's called the Medal of Honor. It's the highest award 
Each military service has its highest award, but this transcends all of them, okay? And I said, listen, Dr. Ramsey, I'm a certified public accountant. I became the first CPA, believe it or not, ever elected to the U.S. Congress. I said, those numbers don't add up. What's the problem? He says, well, did you know there was segregation in World War I and World War II? I says, no, I'm from a lower middle class family from the Bronx. My parents are immigrants. They had no education. We moved to Westchester County when I was 15, 1957. And I said, no one taught me that. I have a pretty good education. Board of Prep, Board of University, Jesuits. And I said, you know, this is too big for me to handle the world. Reagan was the president. I'm a junior member of the Nardi Party. And I have learned about Mickey Leland. Uh, we had done some work together. He needed a Republican. I'm a registered Republican. The parties don't mean anything to me, as you can see. He needed a Republican to go against President Reagan because he was about, with executive order, to eliminate food stamps. And nobody was sitting there, but I did. And little did I know that would then earn me a full partnership with the chairman of the Black Caucus, Mickey Leland, to do what you're hearing me say today. But Little did I know he would die two years later delivering food and medicine to poor people of Ethiopia. And that's why you see over here his date of death. So I am carrying this on, as I've said so many times, in his memory. A wonderful guy. We will get that medal from Mil for Dory Miller. There's no question about it. It's going to be not easy, but I believe this is the year we've got to do it. And there is something going on right now in Waco, Texas, where he comes from, with Eddie Bernice uh, Johnson. Uh, they're building a $2 million memorial for him, and they expect to dedicate it on Pearl Harbor Day, where he acted bravely to deserve this medal. And that's going to be December 7th of this year. And I've got some ideas on how we might be able to get that medal so it's done in conjunction with that. Do you like that? Yes. OK. All right, you've got to have a vision. And then you got to make it happen. Someone said, you know, it's, it's nice to build castles in the air. That's your vision. But you got to put foundations under them to make them count. And that's who I am as a person. That's how I got to Congress. Well, no one thought a CPA could get elected to Congress in a district that had a huge African-American population as a Republican. But I pulled it off. Now, I heard before about the Shaw University report. I, I have to give you one correction on that because why did I put this booklet together? Because I'm kind of the institutional memory on this. People talk about the medal given in 91. Then the seven medals given, they say, by Clinton in 97. And then the one we got, and I was at the Obama White House with Sergeant Henry Johnson, and that short report came as a result of a compromise that I struck with Mickey Leland in the office of the Defense Secretary. Reagan opened the door for me through his secretary, uh, his chief of staff, Howard Baker at that time. He says, you gotta stop all this stuff. You got 180 signatures. You're creating a riot here. You're a troublemaker. Go visit the secretary of, uh, of defense. Let's try to get this thing solved. So I go and I realize that we had to accept a compromise. And the compromise was a pretty good one. He would take Department of uh, Defense money, fund a black university. I didn't know which one at the time, it became Shaw to do an independent study, World War I and World War II, which members of the, the, the service received the second highest award, why didn't they get the first, okay? Now, I won't be with you tomorrow. I know Jeff Simons, because we had a, a, a panel on the National Archives on this issue two years ago. But I think you've got to mention this, that everything that you see in this book is a continuum. Everybody thinks, well, we got the medal for Henry Johnson, and then the seven that came, and then now Dory Miller, then Henry Johnson, Dory Miller. It's all one continuum that started with me and Mickey Leland. And hopefully, it'll keep going, as you said now, with this study, because it's a good idea. But even if it doesn't, I feel morally obliged to make sure we get a medal for Dory Miller in memory of Mickey Leland. Because I didn't know who Dory Miller was. But when I came up with this guy from New York, Sergeant Henry Johnson, and went to Mickey, he says, Joe, I'm gonna do this with you, but I got a guy here in Texas. I thought it was Houston, it's, it's Waco, Texas, in those days. He says, his name is Dory Miller. Can we do this together? I says, absolutely. So we started together, and we put in two bills in 1987 to open the statute of limitations, one for Dory Miller and one for Sergeant Henry Johnson, 
I put uh, Dory Miller's in here, but there's another book but that shows both. That was 1987. That's what started this, okay? Now, when Clinton awarded seven more medals in 1997, I think it was, he did it, but he didn't do anything to work on that. He was just the beneficiary of the report from the Shore University, and I had to write this very long letter to the New York Times. They don't print letters this long, you see, all right? But this is the letter, read it, it's uh, the New York Times, where I had to create the historical perspective that this was not Clinton's work. I'm happy he gave the medals. He was the vehicle. But they had to know that this started with Mickey Leland and Joe DiGuardi back. And now it continues. But thank you for remaining here. Thank you for being here. Please, if you don't have this, take it with you. And if you have others that would like to have this, I have other copies of it. Just come up and we'll give it to you. Get it out. Information is power. Okay? And that's what this is all about. God bless you all for coming.